أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد. Hello everyone and welcome to conversations about beauty and Islamic theology, a series where we explore the rich and diverse intersections between theology art and mysticism. Now today it is our absolute pleasure to host master calligrapher Eftaluddin Kulic. Eftaluddin Kulic is a teacher and researcher at the Faculty of Islamic Theology, Marmara University, Istanbul, where he also completed his master's in Islamic theology. Eftaluddin Kulic is also a renowned master calligrapher. He studied the, the Thuluth and Nasq scripts with Grand Master Calligrapher Hassan Chelebi and obtained his license or ijaza in calligraphy from Hassan Chelebi in 1993. Eftal Adin Kulic has participated in numerous exhibitions, both in Turkey and abroad, and his work can be found in various collections, as well as a number of illustrious architectural settings, such as Mecca and the Uç Şerefeli Mosque in Edirne. Eftal Din Kulic continues to teach calligraphy in Istanbul, where he is currently based. Master Eftal Din Kulic, welcome. It's an honor to have you here with us. Thank you very much. It's my honor to be with you. Uh, Eftal Din, uh, Master Eftal Din Kulic, you, you have related the story of how you became a calligrapher in a recent documentary about calligraphy, mm. uh, the link to which we will uh, have in this uh, description. So I won't ask you to repeat it here, but what I would like to start with is the question of what makes someone a master of Islamic calligraphy. So how is it different, for example, from being a katib or a scribe or someone who just has very nice handwriting? Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I can say it is something to do with the tradition. Uh, there's a huge uh, history background. Uh, of what we are talking about, calligraphy art or Islamic calligraphy art, whatever you say. Um, uh, everyone has their own uh, handwriting and different style, quite individual. Uh, and uh, in the old days, uh, while uh, there were not any particular typesetting for the whole people to unite the, uh, uh, how to say, style for everyone. Actually, there were some attempts, like, for example, in the late Ottoman times, the Rika script were, was introduced to the public so that everyone's handwriting uh, uh, could be legible at some point for all. Uh, today, we have uh, printers or all kinds of different uh, uh, say, ways and methods and uh, sometimes preferred uh, what they call it uh, fonts right so no, nobody has uh, showing any handwriting at, at all anymore so everyone is just typing everything whatever or sometimes there are some uh, devices that you just talk and everything just appears on the screen written and uh, whatever uh, font you just pick there the message is spread out, but there is not any individuality. But the art has something to do with the personal experience and personal choices and personal, um, you know, different handshapes, different attitudes, behavior, whatever. So uh, even though we have the uh, so and so numbers of letters in any alphabet, but there's a huge uh, diversity of handwritings and they are all individually beautiful they are all uh, at some point quite legible uh, but they all have the uh, characters or characteristic uh, things uh, of the writer uh, on a page so it is becoming uh, more than uh, the message more, more than what is written over there so on top of that uh, the if you are talking about a calligraphy art, uh, a proper calligraphy art, that means uh, a way of writing or way of uh, living maybe, uh, a discipline, uh, a tradition, a school, and whatever. So you are, um, uh, with all your efforts to do, to, to write beautifully, in a sense, uh, trying to be part of a community, 
uh, whether you like it or not, uh, if you are following a tradition, you become a follower uh, of a school or, or of a, for sometimes a particular master. Uh, and that makes the whole thing not only a, a work of scribe or a khatib, you may become simply a follower of a big tradition. And uh, sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, from your own choices, from your own preferences for the sake of being in that group, being in that whatever party or artistic group, whatever. So in that sense, it's quite different. Uh, if you are talking about calligraphy art uh, in a different way than the uh, scribe or a Catholic, an ordinary one. Actually, it's really strange to speak to you in like a very formal, <laughs> a formalistic way because you are also my calligraphy master. So I'm not so, used to calling you <laughs> by your first and second name. To me, usually I call you Efta Al Zadin Hoja or just yeah, Hoja. You're welcome. Um, and when I studied with you for a number of years since 2013, it was very clear that, you know, especially in my case, but also in other people's cases, you're correcting people's work, people bring their work to you and you're administering correction. So it's clear that there is an idea in calligraphy of, of what is good and bad or what is right and wrong. Yeah. So perhaps you can speak to us about some of the aesthetic values, like what makes something a good or beautiful piece of calligraphy? Mm. Uh, yeah, as I've said, if the, uh, if the basic problem or if the first intention uh, of uh, spreading the word of Allah, you know, because we are talking about the so-called Islamic art or Islamic calligraphy art, whatever, we tend to start it with uh, the Quranic revelation. So because of that, because of the intentions of these people, of those people in the old days and even today, uh, to make the divine text legible and uh, transfer it to the next generations correctly, uh, with the correct sp uh, spelling and sometimes pronunciation, uh, so it it has it had a, a function in that sense. Yeah, but in time, uh, the beauty and the aesthetics became uh, uh, another uh, phase of the tradition or part of the tradition became and sometimes became even more important than the message itself uh, for the sake of uh, trying to get the help of beauty help of aesthetic to much easily uh, transfer the message because the content uh, is sometimes uh, need and attraction mm. uh, because people have their own experiences in their life and some people live a, a quick and faster life some people are quite silent and easy going uh, but in their uh, daily life uh, uh, troubles and sometimes mood uh, the ideals or some uh, highly referred uh, valuable but, but actually uh, unseen meanings uh, should be brought to their uh, notice. So sometimes simply uh, making something beautiful uh, with, with an aesthetic form uh, makes things easier, much, much, much easier. Uh, and also the the people's efforts to make the more legible and more secure uh, text and books sometimes, uh, they day by day developed some uh, new fonts and they worked on them. They worked on the materials, they worked on the tradition and the methods to teach uh, whatever the, while the grammatical and knowledge uh, was going, were going on the, on one side and the aesthetic and beauty uh, just followed uh, that same rule. Uh, so to, to, to mention about uh, the beauty of the 
calligraphy art, you definitely need to uh, perhaps draw its boundaries. So what, what, what is beautiful, what makes a thing uh, beautiful or aesthetic in the calligraphy art is something to do with the, the uh, tradition, with the methods, uh, with the preferences of the people. And sometimes the mistakes uh, in the tradition may be uh, uh, some good examples of what not to do, mm. right? So the, uh, the people are making some failures in writing, spelling, and reading, whatever. So that causes the interested people to work on them, to think of them. So why, uh, why is that happening? So, so for example, the dots of the letters, so to differentiate some similar letters by, from each other, or uh, the, the local uh, language that uh, the Quranic revelation came, which is Arabic, uh, were not at all uh, popular or not even known for the rest of the world. So but, but by day, when the uh, Islamic culture, uh, that doctrine, that new uh, um, prophecy, whatever, was uh, spreading around some new nations uh, who had uh, no experience in that particular language, but they were intending to get the copies, to be able to read it, understand it. So to make things easier for them, you need to uh, work on your own language, work, work on your own lettering. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, to today we have a huge, uh, uh, material in the thousand and four hundred years, so and so times. Uh, some were kept in the museum, some were kept in the private uh, collections. Uh, so they, they all have uh, the levels of their own centuries, of their own times. So working on them, uh, working on these manuscripts, we can. Uh, exactly follow uh, how the calligraphy art or the scribing or whatever you call it have developed by material, by technique, by fonts, by page setup, uh, by uh, by the signatures you can follow uh, if any particular tradition should be mentioned by the names of the calligraphers who came one after the other. So when they sign, uh, not as an author, but as a, a copier, mm. uh, the calligraphers uh, put their names and the date uh, and sometimes the location uh, wherever they had written. And they very uh, feeling the honor of uh, having such a master, they put the teacher of themselves in calligraphy art, uh, especially if this is a Quran, it is uh, another honor to be uh, mentioning your master in such a honorable work. Mm -hmm. So you can follow uh, those names and you suddenly see a huge uh, number of people uh, somehow connected with each other. And even today, uh, simply by feeling that you are part of one particular uh, traditional way or school, uh, even not even uh, knowing the person, because there's a huge uh, couple of centuries time in between, but you, you become quite friendly with, let's say, all of a sudden with Sheikh you know, you. you uh, uh, only in the past century, uh, we have a chance to have mm. some photographs, a real, the real images of the people because of the photography. But uh, most of time, most of the time, you rely, you have to rely on the miniature painters uh, if they ever had chance to portray uh, one calligrapher. But mostly. Uh, there are some images here and there, for example, for Yakhtar Musasmi or uh, 
sometimes there are some depictions of uh, some old masters. Uh, but it doesn't matter, you just feel like you are part of that team, you, you become uh, somehow responsible for those people because of all their efforts and uh, the traditional, uh, you know, ways and methods they developed in time. So to be part of that, you have a discipline, you have a boundary, you have a you have an area that you can play mm. in uh, that makes uh, one thing uh, more aesthetic i think mm. uh, to my idea so th this is quite different than the concept of uh, being an artist when you compare it to the non-muslim <clears throat> some of the non-muslim uh, branches art branches like for example in painting, let's say. So I don't want to be uh, rude in any way <clears throat> for, the, for the people who are painting, whatever. Mm -hmm. But to be noticed and to be recognized in some of the uh, artistic areas, you have to claim that you are different and you are in, in many ways better or more developed or who invented or who created the new way of expression whatever so when you are totally different when you are uh, denying or when you are getting far far away than whatever uh, had been uh, done before you become a more reliable more respectful person but in the islamic tradition or islamic calligraphy arts the more you uh, you are connected with a school with sometimes a particular artist, uh, you become more significant, even though uh, you are different. Because that that con that closeness, that uh, that bond with an old master is not making you a copier. So th this is just a, a time uh, of we say for child and dynamic. Train them and to, to 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 wait for setting the tea, right? Right. So then it is tasted. So then, uh, then then you are uh, individually uh, able to make something new. So b before realizing, before understanding, before uh, covering whatever had been done before, you cannot claim. Uh, to, to be making the same thing, just like in science, actually. If you are writing an article, you have to make sure that uh, no one else has uh, mentioned whatever you are you know, trying to impose people to, or introduce yourself to be a first sayer of an idea or whatever. You, you have to, you know, if, if there are any people before it is their right to be mentioned as the first and what, what about you when you when you kind of uh, look at when you go to like a gallery or you go to like a museum or something mm. and you have like some istifs or some composition mm. in front of you or someone is bringing you their work what kinds of things do you how do you identify which one is which one you like or which one is good or which one is bad are there some things that attract you like proportion or balance or mm. harmony, these kinds of concepts? Yeah. Uh, as an individual uh, behavior, when I go, if it's a calligraphy related subject, yeah, the, the, among all the whatever Islamic art section, uh, if uh, we are talking about it, something to do with the text, meaning and whatever, yeah. I firstly focus on uh, the What is that? Correction of the text. Mm. Uh, so it, it's my uh, preference. Some people say, okay, art is art, whether right or wrong, mm. whether misspelled or not, whether uh, legible or not. You have mm. to put the letters of one sentence in a, in a mixed way. You can still make a calligraphy panel. So people may be attracted, may be admiring it, may be, you know, would be very happy to have the, in their house 
put put it in the house on the wall and watch it. But personally, I uh, uh, I become more interested than um, in the correction of the text. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, the application and the proportion, uh, sincerity sometimes, the cleanness, you know, some, some technical uh, things. Uh, and the, the, uh, and the, the colors and the empty end, uh, full areas, they, they, they balance, you know, you know, general, uh, general concept of uh, ha handling an art piece, right? But, but sometimes the name simply, uh, the, the signature simply make you much happier. So some, sometimes you don't want to see or criticize any mistakes mm. for the sake of one, one person over there, which is, which, which you like to be friendly with, mm. right? Uh, sometimes the signature is not ever important. The whole beauty uh, of the composition uh, makes everything uh, you know, everything acceptable, whatever else. So you, you, don't, you don't then much bother about whatever uh, written in there. And sometimes the people are so keen on making the very sharp edges for the letters. You know, it should be formally uh, excellent and correct and clean, whatever. Uh, but all of a sudden you may see the whole construction of the composition is uh, not at all correct. Mm. But, but the beautiful letters, there's a big effort, maybe days and weeks of correction, scratching, cleaning, uh, very clean, uh, you may see very powerful hand. It gives you that uh, idea that that person has a strong hand and it's just done with an instant, with a strong hand, confidently, whatever. But, but, the, but there's no con, uh, composition. And the, the, so there's not any expression. There's not any, uh, uh, how to say, conversation. Mm. So the conversation is something you can meet with the other. It is not imposing whatever, whatever you do. So if, if you do your own work and don't worry about what whoever uh, else is uh, feeling, it, it doesn't become a kind of conversational thing. Then right. you do your own work. It's fascinating because it sounds like there's there's like the human element, there's like the individual element. It's within a system, but within that, there seems to be room for the emergence of some kind of individual presence or talent. And you find that to be quite appealing when you're mm. looking at the piece. I guess that's yeah. like a really interesting mm. idea. And what one of the things that uh, we spoke about before is when we're looking at works in the past, I mean, you've done research on, I think, Yaput al Mustatsimi and. Yeah. And by the way, by the way, my PhD, my MA was not uh, only in theology. Oh, sorry. It was actually the calligraphy art, and it was about Yaakut and Mustasimi's uh, manuscripts in, in the compositions. Well, maybe we can talk about that a bit because it's it's something that we spoke about. Because when you look at some of the manuscripts in the past. If we were to like think about it now as like teachers of calligraphy, we might say, okay, if we were to really dissect them, we might say, okay, this is maybe too small or too thin, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, they have an incredible power and yeah. beauty compared to the things which we are doing now, which are very constructed. And so exactly. I was wondering about your thoughts on like why you think there is this 
incredible power and shine and presence in these old works. And because today people are uh, claiming to be as big calligraphers as in the past. Mm. Right. But the, the old masters just, just wrote. Mm. So they, they were not uh, trying to show their, you know, uh, talent or skill. Right. Okay, okay, it was their potential. They were trying to do their best. Mm. But they were also uh, just like breathing, having, having your breath, simply living, living with the art. So they were just writing. So when, when you look uh, in details in the old beautiful uh, uh, Korans, for example, there's not uh, one uh, unique vowel, let's say, one letter for the whole text. Right. You know, in the whole Quran, if there are, let's say, uh, a thousand vowels, mm. you, you will find them, they're all different. Right. So some curvy, some big head, some small head, but they are good and they are, they are matching to wherever they are. Mm. So this is quite the same with the colors. So one color uh, in between two different colors. It, it looks different. Yeah. The same color puts put, uh, two other colors next to it and change it. And every time you change the other colors, you actually tend to change or cause the change in feeling the color that you didn't ever touch. The same thing happens today. People are taking one, let's say, old masters, one letter, and uh, simply uh, today people are using computers. And uh, the introduction of computer is just a you know, corruption of, of the whole tradition. Sorry to say, right. uh, in the internet or in in many of the Muslim countries that are so-called self-taught uh, or who, who has a media, who has a, uh, you know, people uh, who can reach people in some ways with whatever they are. And they are just happy with the applause and with the, oh, mashallahs, uh, well done, uh, Elina Salik, you start uh, so with all these, uh, you know, confirmations or accepting of the people, maybe they are just encouraging a, a Muslim young is rather than doing some nasty things, some dunyavi, you know, worthily, mm -hmm. but worthless uh, things. If uh, any young person or, you know, Muslim country is trying to, you know, do something in the Islamic something Islamic, it is good. I also would like to encourage it, with, would like to, sure. uh, whatever. But you need to do it in a proper way, right? So if everyone is just uh, taking one big master's one letter, and uh, it just like a collage, they're just playing with them. And quickly that they are making compositions. And when you look at them, they, you say, okay, oh, just like Samia family, right? <laughs> just like Shaykh when you look at the letters in details, but whatever uh, the composition is, it's just failing. It, it has many things that uh, never mentioned, never, he, he never heard of it because there's, uh, they never had a proper teacher. They never had a proper ways and, uh, you know, the, the meshk way, meshk usulu, the meshk, uh, mm, training system, uh, then it's all a corruption. So that's why the, today uh, there are some uh, recently published Qurans. Uh, the, the, the designers, or maybe sometimes the calligraphers themselves are uh, trying to make the most beautiful Quran, but it is all mechanic. So there's not any spirit in them. 
there's not any 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 hand any any human in that mm. see what i mean there's a whole whole book of quran pages and pages it's so perfect you can see okay this one single love perfectly uh, transferred into computer and it's repeated mm. but but when you see uh, an old master's uh, a simple humble quran uh, you may not like technically some of the letters uh, in the page right but there are, you can't change that letter there mm -hmm. if, if you take that uh, let's say small uh, letter out and put a correct uh, yeah, I mean, size the uh, yeah, correctly sized letter uh, you'll you'll spoil it mm. you see what i mean yeah. mm. so the beauty is something uh, something to do with the human with the uh, human absorption mm. and it, uh, it should serve to your the eyes, the mentality, and it should be something edible. It should it should be something not plastic, not not electronically made. That that your body, your mentality cannot uh, consume. There's a pro problem of consuming uh, in some recent calligraphy things. I think the idea about the the color the color analogy that you gave the example of the color I think it's a really a really like fascinating one because it's yeah. it seems like what you're saying is that people in the past I'm sure there are people now that have it but people in the past had the ability to see calligraphy from like a a broader top like a bird's eye perspective and they mm. saw it like a system everything was kind of connected in some way and they could choose the right letters or the right style based mm. on the page or the context and mm. now it's been removed because everything is just mechanized and computerized yeah. i think that's a fascinating mm. and also it, it's all metro of uh, where to shop and stop and when to stop so we, we have a saying in turkish uh, probably uh, it's quite family in english as well uh, en iyi iyinin düşmanıdır. Uh, the best is the enemy of the good. Mm. Okay. So exactly good is the same in English, exactly the same. That good is good already. Mm. <laughs> But best is which is uh, you know people should long for and should should bring and everything should be day by day better and better. But for the sake of an excellent whatever you should not be giving in mm. the good one mm. see today people are uh, so much longing so much struggling for an excellent one mm. but it is it is then mixed with their own ego with their own nerves so they are not uh, accepting they don't have the kanat they, they don't have the you know acceptance and Uh, acceptance of the mood and yeah, this is your level at that at today perhaps tomorrow you'll be better but they are they are just made, trying to make things better bigger you know mm. this and that and that struggle makes uh, <laughs> it kills the spirit the, the old people were just were just doing it <laughs> i think that's amazing it's a really amazing Mm. idea the idea of knowing your because it relates to, i guess to knowing yourself too like who you are and what you can achieve and i think you spoke about the mesh system earlier too and i guess the mesh system really the, the way that students are learning calligraphy in the traditional way really stops them from jumping too far ahead because the teacher says well no you have to do this again even if the student thinks that they are amazing the teachers yeah. still stop them right to yeah because whatever whatever changing is not the letters you know the, the, the first day you are in front of the teacher and, and the two years later 
okay there's a uh, there's a visual uh, difference quite changed from day one and day hundred mm -hmm. with the letters but actually the person is changing mm -hmm. Right, he, he's mentally also educated and changed and converted into something else, someone else. Mm -hmm. So, without that experience of being able to or being given a chance to, to, to be changing as a person yourself, uh, you end up making some art pieces which has no spirit. So, the, in academy, for example, the, today, uh, so many, in so many Muslim countries, uh, so many so-called Islamic art uh, artists, whatever, uh, because of uh, the lack of that traditional meshk style, uh, as I just mentioned before, they are producing some plastic, uh, spiritless, uh, but big and shiny, and you know, technically, technically correct maybe uh, sometimes. So what art pieces? Uh, but the the forms of the letters are taken from another master. You know, in academia, this is something <laughs> plagiarism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, this is something you can't even, you know, pronounce. <laughs> you, you have to mention, uh, okay, I did this, I, I got this information, I'm talking this uh, about, but uh, with the words of so and so, it, this, this was mentioned uh, so and so years ago in that book, whatever. That, that makes it more uh, scientific, but today, People are just walking the street, just like they are, you know, uh, schoolmates with Sami family, mm. because they, they are they are they are even they are level at the same level mm. in, in the correction perfection of the letters. Sort of. So, in, in that sense, what what is the importance of of a character formation in calligraphy? both from the perspective, because you're a teacher as well. So I guess it's also part of your training, the way that you train your apprentices. Um, but what's your kind of opinion or take on the role of character in calligraphy? A, a, a personal character or the calligraphic font as, as a font character? Like the personal character of the khattat or your students mm. or in, in general, what's your kind of, about adab or akhlaq we can say? Yeah, everyone is different. Everyone uh, has their own paces, have, have, they, have their own, you know, length of time, for example, mm. to learn, mm. uh, to consume, maybe to, to digest better. Uh, in, in the same day, maybe 10 students, uh, a group of friends may start calligraphy art with the same teacher and they regularly follow the lessons one after the other. But sometime later, you will find some of them more advanced than the other. Right. So what makes that difference is, you know, so many reasons you can find. Mm -hmm. Their talent, their, you know, uh, the time they can save from their other jobs or their daily life to that subject, whatever. But uh, their intentions, they, they all, uh, may differ because everyone, uh, every person is a different creation, a different thing. So they are all human, they are all, you know, citizen of a country and they are all the same in many ways. But they are completely different, they are all individuals. So th there's not any uh, particular uh, quick method which is reliable for everyone and to, to get the same exact result. The, the whole education is uh, like that. So today the generations are given the same uh, same amount of knowledge with the same methods, whatever in the schools, 
I think it's a kind of failure. So in, in the old days, the, uh, the students generally were given first a chance uh, of going through an academic uh, adventure, let's say. So they, they were all introduced to the public schools, whatever available, or, or, or a teacher or whatever. So some of them, uh, with their creation and with their intention, they are more enjoying, let's say, with the books, with the environment, with the teacher, with that thing. Uh, but most of them uh, have a different uh, nature because they would like to produce things. They, they, they are happy with playing with things, with making things. So they, they, they are not... Uh, always successful in academic uh, side, like academic road. So they, they are taken to uh, an artist or to, uh, to an artisan. So they, 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 they are not uh, simply leaving the, ch the child. So they, they, they are not interested in school. So let's leave them whatever they do. They definitely take them to a uh, an artisan to to learn something to 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 introduce them a skill or something to produce. So in the coming years, they are not neglected by the society and they are not becoming a problem uh, as a as an individual person which doesn't have any anything to do. Mm. Uh, not simply for itself, for himself, but for the society. So it becomes problematic. But what happens in the uh, artisan uh, life? So they become uh, a well-mannered with adept and akhlaq mm. uh, uh, while learning, let's say, a tailoring, let's say, uh, learning a shoe making, learning a paper making, you know, uh, maybe working with a uh, construction uh business so they are doing this job but they are actually uh, learning so many ways and you know behaviors manners so so the, that mesh uh, training is giving everyone uh, every individual student whatever amount they need it. Mm -hmm. right. So you can't make uh, everyone or uh, someone uh, with a quicker uh, training as Sami Afandi. There's mm -hmm. no way. So you have to wait uh, that they can learn, they can practice, they can you know, get the feedback. Because sometimes when you do something new, uh, it becomes quite attractive because it is it is something you did it, and uh, for the encouragement, if the uncles around you and the friends and neighbors are saying, "Oh, mashallah, well done," uh, you know, job uh, bizarre. So you may be spoiled. <clears throat> sometimes you have to accept. You have to learn accepting your failures, you, you have to face your failures, uh, not for hum humiliation, but for the sake of, you know, the opening your eyes, uh, seeing your uh, mistakes and, uh, you know, correcting yourself when you develop. So the, in the mesh uh, way, the, the traditional uh, training method of the calligraphers uh, is changing you because uh, it is something it's about something you did with your own efforts and whatever and your nephs is expecting some things, you know some well dones uh, if you deserve it you're welcome uh, the encouragement is good but if people just keep telling you okay you're good you did well, whatever, this is not taking you anywhere. So uh, I had heard in one of the 
the teachers has mentioned about Halim Efendi, I think. Uh, when someone was brought to him uh, as an apprentice, uh, he wrote one rapies, and the next week, I think he came uh, with the homework. And the uh, Hoja said, okay, uh, give me your own Rabbi Yasser. He, he thought that this was the, 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 the one teacher, <laughs> the one the student brought was his own. It was so, I mean, maybe not excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, Hoja just looked uh, not very carefully, but he, he thought that he was not expe expecting this young lad yeah. to be that successful but he didn't accept it as a apprentice wow yeah because there's no chance he can be worked on oh interesting so, so, so it is not simply teaching people the calligraphy art letters but this is all something technical thing mm. uh, you know <clears throat> To be a calligrapher is not an uh, impossible thing, mm. but but being uh, uh, a good performer mm. uh, is, is something else, mm. right? And and the perf performance is not uh, with the with the work. It it is it is your your character your uh your individual uh things that can be felt in the calligraphy uh, that you produce as a as a final um question just to kind of uh return to the contemporary landscape currently we're living in the kind of zoom era mm -hmm. and you've had to transition from in-person teaching to online digital platforms how have you found it how have you found a do you think that it doesn't fully recreate the magic of the mesh system doing it online what are the things that you kind of miss or what are your thoughts on the mm. yeah for the sake of that special times you know that a year and a half maybe already mm -hmm. you know the whole, the whole globe at some point you have to accept it okay this is the new uh and it, if everything else just stopped should we stop as well so this is your choice so we, we just would like to carry on uh but from the point of uh whether this is good or not or, or any better or not or should we just carry on with that new start i would say no uh because it, it makes things, uh, how to say, from the screen, you can't see the body language. You, you, can't, you can't follow the body language of the teacher and the student. It, it is another thing, it is something else. Mm. You can't see how they drink their tea, you see? <laughs> if, if I'm sharing the same room. <laughs> You know, there are some jokes, there are some, the, the life, uh, there's, there's an ongoing life at the same time in the, in the same room shared with the master. But uh, in that Zoom uh, platforms, it, it becomes more, uh, more official mm. in a way. And uh, everyone can just focus on someone else's homework. Mm. You know, I, I'm introducing something new for this person, which he needs actually. Right. But it it is not uh, others' business. It is not others' level. They they actually should not be at all hearing mm. what I'm telling to one individual person. Mm. <clears throat> See, in one point, as I said, you have to accept. Okay, this is the way, but uh, it actually kills the uh ideal connection of the teacher and student uh, and it, it it becomes a mixture of everyone's uh 
experience. And, and, they, and, they, have to, and they have a chance to you know, rewatch. Okay, it's an advantage. Uh, I don't know. And for example, if you have one teacher in, if, if you are trying to uh, absorb one unique style, you know, you know ad adopt a master's ways, manners, whatever, uh, you should not be following so many other masters. So you, you are welcome to meet them. You are welcome to, you know, uh, talk with them. You know, but you should not be taking the same lesson from this master, the other, the other, the other. Uh, so that Zoom platforms are causing that kind of mixture. So for example, if I don't accept a student for some reason, I don't. But they have a chance to, <laughs> to later watch <laughs> what I teach. Sure. Yeah, this, this is silly. <laughs> You know, so sometimes uh, there's a reason, uh, you know, of a refusal of someone. And all of a sudden, you may not, you may not be, you know, enjoying. This is not something, you know, bad. It, it's not something rude. It's not something, you know, discrimination. This is something else. Uh, everyone has their own. Uh, Characters and some people are good with some people, and some people are for for some silly reasons uh, may not get on well with each other. This is we have to accept this. Yeah. And this is the life. I mean, mm -hmm. right? So you are, the teachers are forced, you know, to to enjoy <laughs> yeah. to enjoy <laughs> teaching someone that. Uh, that 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 trans uh, the, the knowledge or skill trans transferring will not be possible. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely agree with you on. Mm -hmm. I think there's a magic of having classes where you can see the teacher. There's tea. Yeah. There's. Mm -hmm. and I think probably that's what I, I miss the most. You know? Yeah. Yeah is uh, not just learning, but everything that comes with the learning experience. And you're, to, you're, you're talking to a screen, and sometimes even not uh, looking at the screen, you are just you know, <laughs> doing something. And <laughs> uh, for example, in the faculty, uh, in some of the schools, some of the classes, there are uh, 20, 20 students, I think, registered, mm. and only three of them online at some days. <laughs> Because they have they have a chance to rewatch the recorded mm. lesson, and they just find two three uh, students in this in the class yeah. to make things running. Yeah. Uh, but the, the whole lesson becomes a dull, you know, uh, not very rich uh, in a way that many people should be involved in. There should be some questions, answers, and you know, some, some odd questions sometimes, which may open the subject, you may, you may talk about it. Uh, but no one is asking anything. And sometimes I, I need to check by just, just checking whether they are uh, at all over there or not. Right? See, the, these kind of things okay. they are not good. So it, it should be uh, how to say? Uh, I can't remember the correct term, but but face to face, use they use. No, use they use the shade. Uh, anyway, anyway, I remember. Well, I'll be, I'm lucky if I even get two or three students. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Usually I'm just talking to myself for one and a half hours. Yeah. Um, Iftal Dean Hodja, thanks. <clears throat> thanks so much for your 
time and your wisdom and your patience. I think for for me, I learned so. I mean, every time I'm always learning, but I, I learned so much about this. Can it, it's so hard for me, especially to understand the relationship between character and mm. art. But I think you really hit mm. the nail on the head. You know, I think you really made me opened up some ideas about why it's so important to know oneself and the teacher's role in helping the students to know who he or she is mm. and then how that relates to artistic production. That's a really fascinating mm. uh, idea. Eftar yeah. Hoja, thank you so much. And uh, we're wishing you all the best, inshallah. The quarantine is over and you can continue faith-based teaching soon. Inshallah. Inshallah, thank you so much. So You're welcome. Soon. Thank you very much for everyone who is involved in that project. Good luck. Thank you.